So greetings ladies and gentle players, welcome back to Not Quite My Real Board. Unfortunately I did not feel like setting it up today because I only have the one game that I really feel like going over. And I still want to go over it anyway because it's a great game. You might be saying, oh, you're just saying that because it's played by Cho Heyun. And you think she's the most amazing thing in the history of ever. I mean, that's true, but it's not the only reason why I wanted to go over this. And to that, you might say, oh, I can see it between a nine don professional and a one don professional. And you just like going over games between a nine don professional and a one don professional, especially when they are played by Cho Heyun. And at that point, I mean, yeah, you got me. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm going over this. That is why I'm going over this. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely 100% true. But never fear, dear viewers. I think you're going to enjoy this just as much. Just like you'd enjoy going to Club, the one-stop shop for in-person go, and finding people in your area to play with. Let's say your area is Sweden. Let's say you're living in Stockholm. What do you know? There are some players who you can play Go with, assuming it is safe in your area to do so, like let's say you were vaccinated, and thus you can do such things again. Or you can get yourself some pretty cool uh, Kaya Go boards. If you need boards for home use, let's say you're going over a game, maybe even a pro game, you definitely want something to play it on. Might want to check out Baduk.club for that reason as well. Either way, thanks in part to them for, as always, sponsoring these videos. So, the game begins off with Cho Heyun taking black on the 4-4 point, as we generally see nowadays. White says, I am not going to let you play anything and everything. I am a wuss pants, and I am going to play in the opposing corner, blocking any type of diagonal play. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Black faces, 3-4. So we're expecting an enclosure or maybe an approach into Chinese or something. White says, I like 4-4 four, four points. You're probably going to 3-3 three, three me. Nowadays, if you are white and you are playing the 4-4 four, four point, let's face it, you you must be getting ready to be 3-3. Three, three. I mean, it just, it, it just has, it just has to be. Black slams down a two-space enclosure, as as we see nowadays. Uh, some talking about this is probably warranted. I have seen some people still do the uh, small knight. You do see in re uh, in response to this a lot of shoulder hitting here because giving up this for larger influence is actually a thing people are still doing. So that's that's pretty uh, common. If you play the large knight, then this is probably a thing that uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of because this is also a thing that is perfectly common. Brain froze. Yeah, something like this. It's weird that this thing is as common as it is because, I mean, it's pretty strong for black in my opinion. But hey, it's it's something people are, are are playing nowadays, so just be aware of that. Um, with the two space, you don't really get those two things. Like you're not gonna get like someone cr being crazy and shoulder hitting you here because that's an, a stupid amount of territory that you develop off all in corner. There are invasions with the two space though, so that's the trade off of dodging like this and this variation. So you know. It's a thing. It's a thing. Either way, White jumps into the right-hand side, and we can give a nice tip of the fedora to him. Actually, sorry, her. This is the 7th Korean Women's League, round 6. So, nice. Not doing the split. You might be like, I remember back in the day that we, well, we gone and did the splitting. Why aren't we doing the splitting anymore, Mr. Dwyerin? Tell me why we don't do that no more. Well, we don't do that anymore because you can kind of get an enclosure here and then an extension. 
So you split to block the extension from the enclosure, and they wind up getting an extension from an enclosure. So it's kind of weird. That that seems like it was way too long of a lesson for us to learn. Because for like a good 10, maybe plus years, yeah, split was super common in regards to every enclosure. And then someone was like, well, well, why don't, hear me out. We're, we're doing this, why? Because we don't want them getting no stinking extension from no stinking enclosure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But what, what, what if I enclose and then I extend? What? Mm, that's so weird. That took so long to, to, to I, I don't know. Maybe pros aren't all that good. I, that's all I can say. But all right. But yeah, as, as chat just said, old books always say block the split. So, all right. Now, here's something that I do not normally see in response to the approach. Starpoint. I view Starpoint pincers specifically as Japanese Jiseki. Because I don't see them a lot. I, that's not to say, uh, yeah, the Japanese first came up with it. I have no idea like where it first came up or whatever. But I just don't see it a lot in Chinese play. And I don't see it a lot in Japanese or in Korean play. I see it specifically in Japanese play. So when I see Star Point Pincer, I'm like, ooh, interesting, Japanese style. Let's see where this is going to go. So we get the good old double approach here, as I would expect. You could go into the 3-3 three, three and just be like, hey, how are you doing? Uh, this way you probably want to also follow up. But that is a lot of... A lot of stuff to be given away. That like that star point seems to be in really good position right now. You might, mm, excuse me, you might even have a good argument of playing here into here, just for a little bit more. You know, it's pretty pog. Anyway, oh, so a uh, really good question that was actually asked in chat. So why bother? Why why play here and not like sticking to what you've already played? Um. The reason for that is multiple. It's hard to know which reason is being picked here, but there's a couple of reasons. One, we can start fighting over the right side of the board to ensure it doesn't turn into a Moyo game. If Black does start tying the stones together, that's probably going to be a framework versus a framework game, and that's perfectly fine to play. You can play, let's say, this is going to be an exaggeration. But you can play something like this, where we're just going to start uh, having frameworks on both sides. But if you don't want to play that type of game, then you need to find a way to break this from actually happening. Let's say you want to play more of a territorial game. Well, then you probably want to start getting stones on the right side of the board to just ensure that uh, it's harder for Black to take that area. Even now, being pincered and changing directions... That stone is going to require a little bit of an investment on Black's part in order to kill it. So if Black does want to try and tie this together and take this as points, then she is going to have to invest multiple moves to ensure that that's, you know, going to be killed. So here we see move number one. And White's going to Hane inside. I'm going to just live here. Could have said, I'm going to play, we don't see this very much anymore, but could have changed directions here. That would have been uh, okay too. And I think if this is still fine to play at the amateur level, for example, uh, because even now, R14 isn't completely dead. You could still, for example, go ahead and sacrifice this thing for maybe... Um, some outside odulator if you need to reduce more, you know? That is, a, that is the benefit of having Aji. A stone, generally speaking, unless it's completely and utterly surrounded, a stone that is not off the board is still useful. So white's playing here, which is okay, just going for the life. Bamboo joint. So, not doing anything tricksy here by Black. Just playing really, really solid. 
White says I take your corner. Black says I take your influence. White chooses to save the one stone, which, okay, is pretty big. I would expect nowadays uh, all of the aggressive greedy players to play this one, and I kind of wish that White had done so, just to see what Black's response is to it. But the danger there, of course, is later on you could still play something as simple as this and potentially kill off the little one stone, which would be kind of problematic, kind of problematic. Um, so, okay, we're saving the stone. Cool, cool, cool. But now we're running our head into our opponent's stone, which, um, it's not going to kill you, but it does give a huge follow-up now, which is why we see white continue. If we play away right now, for example, then we can threaten to kill, and then we have to, like, do all of this, and then suddenly... Holy crap, we solidified the bejesus out of the right-hand side. That's... Ooh, that's not the end of the world, but the question becomes, why did we push this if this is the result we're giving our opponent? So, okay, we're playing here too. Throwing down a uh, double Hane. Extending, and now this is the first trap for idiots. Why I say it's a trap for idiots is because if you are an idiot, you probably play a lot of Puppy Go, in which your opponent plays a move, and then you're just happily following at their heels, you know, answering in that area. And then they play somewhere else. Like a good little puppy, you go over that little area, and you play over there too. And then they play somewhere else, and then you drop what you're doing and keep following your opponent around the, around the board like a little puppy dog. Which I know describes a lot of you. I'm uh, just saying, I know it describes a lot of you. But here's the thing. If you drop down now, your opponent can take a big move. So you do not want to do that. Instead, Black says, I am not a little puppy dog. I am taking Sente and playing here. To which you might say, but you can't do that. What about this and this? Well, that's also Gote, so who cares? Like, okay. One stone died. Darn, I get, two st I get to play two stones elsewhere for one stone dying and my wall still being completely fine. It's a decent trade. It's a decent trade. So we're playing over here. All right, so I want to get this placement right. White does pincer. And it's kind of obvious why white does pincer. If we do white does back off, then... You've got either this one or this one, which is making excellent use of this huge freaking wall that's spanning literally the entire board. So I can see why white is feeling a certain way about that. So white says, no, you cannot do that. I'm going to not allow it. Black pulls a page out of white's book and double approaches. I do like that we're not being greedy here and trying to jump out. You see this in handicap games a lot, like, ha ha ha, I want to play here and then I will get you. But this is pretty much alive as is. Like, legitimately, you can just play... I'm Okay, don't play these exact moves, but that's alive with, like, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 points. And a th maybe a threat underneath? Like, it's way too easy to live. If you're capping, you're just doing it for influence, you're not doing it to kill, because you can't. You can't, it's impossible, it's not going to happen. So, okay. Changing directions. White is actively trying to build it, which tells us we can on a... And if we throw in, we know which way we're going to get blocked, because white's trying to build. And here we see a lot of fun stuff. Now here is a question chat. Let's see if you get it right. Why is A not going to be played? Who could tell me? Let's see if y'all are... I 
doesn't really do anything because B is not an idiot. Is C18 sente if A is not played? Interesting question. Interesting question. <laughs> really, the answer is so easy, but is nobody getting it? So here's the thing. Ladder breaker? So it doesn't have anything to do with ladder. Nothing to do with ladder. Bl white plays here. If we play here and try to kill this, the answer is that simple. What are you going to do? You just lost the game. Because the underneath works. Completely works. Nothing to do with the ladder. But the underneath. Yup. Simple, simple, simple. Because of that outside stone, white has to defend against d18. If you don't defend against d18, you screwed. So even if this was a thing that worked, and we don't care if it does or not, this is the problem that works. Like, we can back off here. Doesn't Didn't protect this, so this is still fine. And play something like that one. And that's oh, it's such a huge pickup. Now all that territory for what at the top of the board, all gone. So plays the Hane instead. Because that would be Super Sag. Can Hane back. Because, I mean, taking's pretty huge. Now we connect. Now we connect. And White says, mic drop. That's all my territory top of the board. Uh-huh. Yeah, read it and weep. All them points? Mine. Hmm. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? What y'all think about that? Pretty weak mic drop? I mean, technically, it's a pretty strong mic drop. Because this, for those of y'all who play chess, I kind of view this as white putting black in check. That this is, this is a huge check. Like, you can imagine right now, right? You can imagine in your mind's eye. Let's say white, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's say that white plays a really big stone on the board. Like, what, how, many, how much territory is that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 30 points here. Plus Comey, 36? This is 40? 50? 60? That's a, that's a one game. White wins. So this is check. Respond to this or you're going to lose. Because I'm flashing 60 points on the board. And I doesn't even consider the fact that, you know, you know, you know, you know. There is this thing hanging around too. So yeah. It's cool. But uh let's see, Theogo and Junkawan. And I think those are the only two people who said it. Uh but yeah, so we're going to not allow that to be 30 freaking points. With the easiest reduction issue of ever. We're just gonna shoulder hit. Easy. Easy, 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 easy. Someone is trying to take way too many points for themselves. So you shoulder it. I'm not really sure what White is asking here. That's the problem. This, I like the solidity of strengthening the stone, but this is just too much. So see where this is going to go. White responds. Black says, your shape is a scam. Sorry, 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 sir, but your, or ma'am, your shape is a scam. And sure enough, we have to defend. Which means we get to come out. Now, because we defended this stone, and not this group, this shape is screaming. It's, it's like one move from death right now. From just the, killing the entire left-hand side for white. So, really weird thing to leave behind, but if you let your opponent get away with it, oh my god, you're, you're, you're going to feel like an idiot. 
and this is a professional Wandan who is doing this. It's it's interesting how like at the at the pro level right now, Black's um, way forward is to answer why White's moves are asking for too much. Let's say. So it comes on out, just settles, pick up a couple of points, get the settling done, the push and cut don't work, all nice, all nice. Asking questions about the cutting point, reinforces it nice and solidly, now there's no weird push and cut or the throw in over here, all fine. White's got to run away. Now black's taking territory too. Now, why we know we can jump on the left-hand side and not the top is actually simple. Simplest thing in the history of ever. If we try and draw sector lines for white, we're already behind, we're already out. We're out by a single stone. So either we're in danger of being surrounded or we're not in danger of being surrounded. And if we're not in danger of being surrounded, then we don't owe a move there right now. So, done. No pro blemo. White plays a move. Sector line's been redrawn. So, we jump out. E Z P Z. It's like a basics game, but it's a professional game. It's just a high-level professional game where you can see ideas clearly being played. Because uh, early pros, like this one down here, I mean, they're not terrible players or anything. They just haven't always quite learned the value of some of the more solid play that we're seeing on display from uh, good old Black here. Those who learn it, though, do go far. Jumps out. This is... arguable. It looks like we're still out. It's a very huge argument. It looks like we're still kind of peeking ahead of it. So white... or so Black says... I've got Sente now. I've got Sente now. So where's a big move to play? Let's see who can get it in chat. Where are them biggie moves? Where's biggie move? Biggie move, biggie move, biggie move. Yes, who's going to find that biggie move? Who's going to find it? Approach the lower left. Do something. No one's gotten it. Oh, dear. Simple. Next weak point on the board. Next weak point on the board was Atari. How do we know that this is a biggie move? There are multiple ways to know. One, I mean, the cut just works and kills your stone off. Two, let's say we did something else. We played somewhere else. Who cares where? So our opponent plays here. And now suddenly we have attack number two on our hands. So being able to see that there is a weak point on the board, we have Sente, we're getting rid of it right freaking now, is enormous. Because if you don't see it, you're under attack in maybe two places. If you do see it, you're nice and smooth, you're picking up points, everything's gravy. You want to play L11? L11. You wanted to play the L11. L11 is not a bad move. But unfortunately, the question becomes, like, you, you help out the group that's weak, but the group that's weak is still going to get cut off. So it's still kind of, it's not bad. You're looking after your stuff, which is good. But this is just like infinitely better. 
White surrounds. Okay, making making them pointy pointies. The cap's pretty large now. The extension's pretty large now too. Swizzles. I like it. Yeah, White would want to like play here, right? Maybe try to like do some kind of like weird pokey thing first and like try to surround or grow the bottom. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. White wants to grow off this. This is a wall. This wall wants to grow out. So the person who said, who was it, J9? Who was the first person to say it? Or J8? Yeah, so people are saying J9 and J8. Right idea. That's a cool move. White picks this one because there's also considerations for the fact that that cut no longer works with the ladder. So similar idea. The jump down is, is pretty pog. Good idea. You've got the right idea. You're identifying what white wants to do, and you're actively trying to ensure that white doesn't do it. This one's a little bit fancier because there's a second uh, reason for it. That's a black stone. Yeah, so there's a black stone. Uh, as, as a black's move. I'm saying that you were identifying what white wants to do. White wants to grow. So what black is going to do now is this, but it also interrupts the ye old ladder. So now that we identified that, as much as we would absolutely love to respond to this move, there is a problem. And that is as some of you pointed out, now black really does want to play the cap because it grows. So you can see how these moves are being selected. You can see how those are being selected, but what's really interesting, what's really interesting is black is threatening with her moves. And even now, it's the same thing. Like, I can poke in here. I can threaten the small knight. Because she's going out of her way to reinforce her small knights and defend them. But, you know, this is not reinforced yet. This isn't reinforced yet. So, because black is doing something... That must mean there is a hidden cost to white not affording black the same courtesy. So now we're seeing moves like this, because we've played moves like this. And we're seeing moves like this, because white played moves like this. So, pretty cool. White plays here. And what do we say about this move? Yeah, it's a scam. It's a scam. Does white really want to cut here? Most peeps against uh, cutting points like this, freaking scams. Only, only bad response a lot of the times is to actually answer it and give your opponent another move. So instead, black's like, what are you doing? Responding to your move, ma'am. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You, yeah. You right. Yeah. You responded to my moves. Reinforcing because you know what's happening right now, right? She's threatening to uh, start cutting up this shape to pieces, so we're losing some Aji here, but we're strengthening this because our pokes are strengthening white. So we have here. We're fighting for Sente because we know there's an attack inbound. So white's trying to figure out what to do about it. Meanwhile, black goes in. Is black yes, this is uh the seventh Korean Women's League round six game. So here we go. White says, please don't cut me. Black says, and defend yourself. Defended. And extend down. You can see the extra value for here, because it goes back naturally into a tiger mouth. So read that out in quite well. Read that out quite well indeed. 
Threatening. Alright, those are pretty dead. Only one teensy tiny problem with being dead there. You have to capture these stones. And if these stones are captured, are you, uh, are you really uh, alive? You gotta capture these two stones? Maybe not. Says don't cut me. Atari. Poke, poke, poke. Threaten to live locally. That way you wouldn't have to protect uh, against the cutting. Threatening to again connect. That way you have to protect against the cutting. Black says, all right, now what? White says, I connect. Black says, I'm going to cut you off. Now that right there is a pretty bold exchange. And so I'm going to go over that again. Because they were both asking questions. It's hard to say how this game is going to continue without poking to see what the person wants to accomplish. So here, this was, can I kill you? The answer to that was no. Here was splitting and attacking shape. This was defending because there's me I cutting points if we, if we get the push in. That could be not so poggy woggy. Forcing a questionably dead shape here with the take and about to activate the cutting point. This was the weirdest one because it feels like it's not required. You know, it feels like we go ahead and do this now without this point. There is some like attachment into like cuttings and stuff. So I guess she just didn't want that to turn around and have uh have that happen. Little little odd timing, but okay. Response was can I live in your corner? Answer to that was no. Then can I connect underneath you? Answer to that was yes, if you in turn allow me to cut off you. And now white doesn't have to say, sure, go ahead and do it. White could say, nope, I'm going to connect up right now. The downside there, of course, being now we've got multiple groups that aren't alive locally, right? This could get cut here, not alive locally. And if we're just taking the two stones here, not alive locally. So you can see how the questions are being asked and the answers both are coming up with. So here is like, yep. Fine, you can cut through that. That's okay. But now I've got this or this. So we've got me, I cuts. All right, all right, all right. Tries not to have all their stones die. Black says, but you didn't kill my stones. If you didn't kill my stones, I'm not dead. Didn't you need to double tap these? White says, no, because I've got this one. Duh. But Black says, but I can play here. And White's like, so? Is that a problem? Well, it means I can Atari. Uh-huh. And then I can play here. This is huge because there's uh, stuff underneath. So you got to be like, nope. Nope, we ain't having that today. That means we get to potentially live. And White's like, nope, not having that today either. And now another group is cut off. Even if these stones are dead, we just cut off this. Why is that important, chat? Who can see why cutting off this is important? Why is this importante? Even if this is dead. Rumton says two weak groups. Precisely, because this is cut off too. So if this and this can be cut off. Interesting. It means the minute Black goes and continues this jumping battle, 
against the right group, the left group is in danger of dropping dead. So, cool idea. White says, please be dead. Black says, no. White says, pretty please. This is huge. Throw in Atari. Ugh, owie. That is a painful co. Can't let the cut happen. Denies the inside eye. And then retakes. Now this is huge. Because... <laughs> white can't be allowed, or black can't be allowed to fill this co. Otherwise, like, this is dead. Atari connect, retake, push block, retake, picnic co, by the way. Like this dying, not the end of the world. Ignores. Okay, so now this is dead. If we retake here, we can connect. And then at best, it's going to be Seki with a co still for kill. So, okay. Now, the cost of this was the three stones, but white gets first move. Wait, why did black block? Why, why not? It's a picnic. Why wouldn't black block? Why, why give up this for the thing that you don't care about? It's pretty big. These uh, cutting stones dying means this is never a thing. We're picking up territory along the right-hand side now because there's no longer any kind of... There's no longer any kind of uh, shenanigans here later on for further reduction. So this is this is actually pretty huge. This is huge. What what Black picked up here? Because until this died, the points here were up in the air. So we got six points from that, ten points from that, and then we probably never have to take this. So then we also significantly got, like, this also in exchange. So about 27 points. It's not bad. It's not bad. And endgame gets a corner. Now, we could have killed this. How many stones is that, anyway? I don't even know. How many stones is that? So if we kill this, we pick up uh, about 32? It's not that different. It's really not that different. And exchange, keep in mind. Keep in mind, that would also be... Actually, that would be 32. Um, minus this, because we're killing these off now, right? So that would be, this is dead, this is dead, this is dead, and then... This is all solid territory. So we're getting an extra 21 points to the opponent. Hmm... Yeah, it's kind of, you could make the exchange, but it's not, I don't think it's as, as good as you, you might think it is. So now White has sent it, it says, I am the aggressor now. White Black says, really? Yes. Now this is potentially code for Seki, but it's probably never going to happen. Like you could technically play here, connect, and then take this away. And then you technically have Seki. Because white can never Atari from this side with both stones. It's unlikely, but possible and had better never happen. Otherwise, this is dead. But it is technically possible to maybe Seki this. Biggie point. Because we got Mi connection here and here. Therefore, this is small to uh, try to surround. You got that one. Poke, poke, poke. Now this, I love the answer to it. I would have thought, okay, yeah, just, just connect me, I right? No problems. But black is going hunting. Again, which I love. Remember, this is the professional who told me I need to be more aggressive. 
I can kind of see why. I can kind of see why. It's like, yeah, we could just connect and be, you know, safe. Uh, or I could just keep trying to kill things. I mean, you can do that too, right? That seems, that seems fair. Uh, Cho Hyun? Yes, I've had her review some of my games. I think I have a YouTube video about that. And I met her a couple of years ago in Australia. So, yeah. She's, she's a character. She loves traveling around and, like, teaching people. She's amazing. So, white cross cuts, trying to get something done. Black Atari. Says, can I cut you? Is that possible? Says no. All right. Then we're out. <clears throat> Let's keep in mind. This group, um, <clears throat> not, uh, not, uh, <laughs> not, not really healthy right now. You might say. Tries to jump away. Black follows. Creates cutting points. And at this stage, it's clear to say that white has, white's gonna lose the game. Like, you can see how badly this game is going, that white, white's gonna lose it. Severe attack in the middle. The right is just being invaded or... Yeah, it, it's... It ain't going well. Tries to keep everything. This is Trixie AF. Like, yeah, go ahead and Hane. I'm gonna cut you. And I'll threaten to co in... Ah, uh, so insane. Drops down. Follows. Plays Hane. Can I co? There's the co. Because there's this Atari here, or the take. Ah, just asking for more from white. Take starts to go under. Atari retakes because this capture is huge. This is, has to be answered, otherwise, Atari, uh, take. Atari, Phil, Atari dead. So, gotta answer. Retakes. It's like, hey, you, you, you want another cow? White says yes. Black says fantastic. Is he saying Atari? Yes. Uh, are, 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 are we new to game? Atari is when uh, a stone has one liberty left. So this group is an Atari because it has the one liberty only. This stone is an Atari because it has the one liberty only, as well as this one, this one, this one. Uh, right now, this one, this one. These, like I mentioned. Um, that one as well. Technically, this one too. And I think that's it. Alright, no problem. Uh, though now I forgot where I was. Uh, take, right. So, then retake, got it. Black connects. Or white connects, sorry. Black retakes. Now, this stone's an Atari. It extends for more liberties. Black says those stones are mine. But since this stone's an Atari, we retake. Thus, uh, we now have a co. Atari on the one stone. And connects. Can't take because then retake and you can't win two coats at the same time. Threaten to disconnect. Says, nope, I'm connecting. And retake. Connection for a push in to kill all of these stones. If these stones here are disconnected, then oof, that's dead. That's a dead end. So protect and retake. White says, please, dear God, answer me. And, you know, if you play here, it looks like it might be a thing. But there's a problem. There's a little bit of a misread here. Because after the Atari, you don't take this one. 
you would take this one, which means white has to play here first. Black gets to remove liberties down to three. Atari on the group has to take. Push, push, push. Take. Misclick. Hane. Atari. And now, technically, technically, this could be, this could be a co. If you were to play here right now, it is, in fact, a co. There is only one minor problem. Nothing, and I do mean nothing, is worth that co. So, that's an issue. You've, you've got nothing. I don't even know where you'd find a threat right now, to be honest. Um, where would you find it? Where would you find a? Where would you find a co? Like, where would you find a co threat? Like, maybe here. You could try this one, I suppose, eh? But then you take. You get to connect this up, but then you just connect here. Which is a huge frigging problem, because remember, even if we play somewhere else right now, this is now a co for, like, the entire top of the board. Because remember, if we win this and play here, this could be Seki, which means this is dead. So needless to say, it is at this point here where white resigns. Because you're not winning the co. The top is potentially Seki, which ends up in a complete kill. And the middle still needs to live right now. Like, that hurts a lot. O9 tame makes white another eye? Yes and no at the same time. It can potentially make an eye, but only if you ignore this move. Right? You'd have to, like, ignore that thing. Because now... Yeah, there, there's... There's connotations. Or you could just play maybe just this one. And then just kill that. So, I mean, you can, but you're gonna die again. You can, but you're just gonna be dead again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even if everything lives for white, she only has one corner. She has, like, one corner, so she's down on points. So, oof. Painful game from Ch for, uh, for Ch Heian's opponent here. But it's a great game because it's very simple to follow, for the most part. That way you can learn a lot from it. So, yeah. Great game. Ah, loves it. It could have, if this game went longer, I might have uh, just sat on this game for December. It could easily have been this year's bloodiest game, but it lost out on a technicality because technically A is not dead yet. Technically A is not dead yet. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. Where does A run to? Probably nowhere, it probably dies. It probably dies, but it's not dead right now, so... Unfortunately... Unfortunately, it just can't be... It can't be nominated. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this game. And as always, I will see you next time.